Hello everybody and thank you very much for watching. This is me, Mr. P, and in this video we'll show you how we can convert your Raspberry Pi into a NAS server and Plex Media server when everything is done using Samsung DeX. A couple of things before you carry on into this video. It's gonna be a, a background noise. 3D Print is about to start printing about 20 minutes job for me. And here I have my little one on the floor playing with, looks like Xbox One controller. So it's gonna be a fun video today. So let's begin. In this video, we'll use the Raspberry Pi 4, 240 gigabytes SSD hard drive of my external storage, and we have 32 gigabytes SanDisk and microSD card where we're gonna put Raspbian OS, and everything will be connected via USB Type-C cable because this Raspberry Pi 4 supports USB Type-C power support, power delivery, and the everything will be connected via LAN cable. I suggest to use the wired connection instead of wireless because it's just gonna make the setup process much, much easier. First thing, we need to format the micro SD card. So I'm gonna plug that into the USB-C hub. Let's go into a settings and we need to start formatting this. So into a settings, then uh, this um, the magnifying glass and let's search for storage. Find the storage, click in there and then click on the three dots. This depends what kind of Android version you have or One UI version, that can be different. In One UI 3.0 is gonna be uh, below here. It's gonna say um, advanced on a 3.1 is gonna Three dots then click advance then scroll down find SD card that is you want to format and then click format and click format again it's gonna take literally a couple of seconds or so to finish so once that is done we need to go and start creating a Raspbian OS onto that micro SD card for that to do you need to go into Google Play Store and then load the app called Raspi Disk Imager and I'll show you that for you and link in description for this app. You'll find the link, a link for that app in the description below. So let's search for Raspi. Run, let's run that. Okay, so I'm gonna choose uh, what kind of, what OS I want to install. I'm gonna pick Raspbian OS 32-bit version without desktop, that's fine. And I'm gonna, I will leave headless tick and enable SSH tick. That will allow me to Oh, that will allow Raspbian, Raspberry Pi to install Raspbian OS and configure everything without uh, connecting to a monitor, so headless installation. And SSH will allow me directly connect to Raspbian, Raspberry Pi via SSH as soon as uh, I will detect that this app, Raspberry Pi is already connected to my home network. That means that the Raspbian OS is fully installed. You will see what I mean. And then I need to make sure that I am about to write this into the uh, correct micro SD card. Once then everything's picked up, I'm gonna click right to SD card, and that will take about five minutes or so to complete, so I'll be back when it's all finished. Once this app fully moved Raspbian OS to SD card, you will get this message saying image okay. I'm just gonna click okay. I can close that. Now I'm just gonna go back into a settings, search for storage. I already have this selected here. Click on storage, click on the three dots, advanced, and I will unmount the micro SD card. I'm doing that because my tab is sick just shouts at me if I'm not doing that correctly. And I just wanna do that just in case I don't wanna get my micro SD card corrupted or anything like that. Right, so that's done. So my micro SD card is prepared. Now I'm just gonna take this micro SD card, put it into the Raspberry Pi, connect the power and ethernet, and I'll be back. Once power and ethernet cable is connected, you just leave the Raspberry Pi running for about five minutes or so because right now it's just doing all this process in the background, installing Raspberry OS, setting up the IP address and etc. So it's at about five minutes job. I would say after about six, seven minutes, you just need to go to your home router, log into your home router, check if the Raspberry Pi has got detected or run the app called Thing that you can find on Google Play Store for free. This app will go and scan your entire home network and give you a list of all the devices that are connected connected to your home network and just look for Raspberry Pi in that list. So right now I'm just gonna give another five minutes or so for all this to run and I'll come back when it's done. About six to seven minutes later, I know that my Raspberry Pi is connected to my home network. I just checked and I have a new IP address. So next step is to run SSH client. You can pick whatever SSH client you want. I'm gonna use Juice SSH. And now I'm just gonna click in the managed connections. I'm gonna check what the Pi server IP address is. Say to six, yes, so that's the one. Uh, this is the account already set up previously because this kind of setup process is at least five, six times already tried this. So, so far headless installation, the way I just demonstrated for you, um, haven't failed at all. So hopefully it's gonna work for you as well. So I know if I'm gonna click on this, it's gonna automatically connect, automatically will pick up the username, Pi and the password Raspberry. And if I'm gonna click accept, it's 
gonna connect into Raspberry Pi using SSH. So first thing, once you connect to Raspberry Pi, you need to type sudo apt get uh, get space update semicolon uh, not semicolon whatever this squiggly thing is, and then sudo apt get upgrade dash y what that command will do is will update the repositories and then we'll upgrade them and dash y means that you just accept everything and it's just gonna go through a process without any interference from you so this will take about up to five minutes or so depending how many updates there are how fast your broadband speed is and how fast is sd card uh, that you're using for this kind of setup so we'll be back when this is all done once sudo up get update and upgrade is completed then we, you can start installing open media vault to find a command, you will just go into the description below, find the link which will take you to a website by the pymylifeup.com and in there, there is an article, this link will take you to an article about installing Open Media Vault to Raspberry Pi and in here instruction says to do upgrade, upgrade and update, we already done that so we're just gonna click and copy the next command on the list, which is gonna minimize this and left click and hold, select paste and now Open Media Vault will get installed on my Raspberry Pi this process will take up to 15 minutes or so to complete again depending on a broadband speed and how fast sd card micro sd card that you're using with raspberry pi open media vault installation has finished as you can see the last line informing that ip address may change and you sh could lose connections and rebooting automatically started so basically what that means that raspberry pi is automatically rebooting the ip address will change as soon as reboot is finished and that's all you need to do is connect to your home network, uh, home road network router, check what IP, uh, what new IP address your Raspberry Pi will get, or just use the Fing app that I mentioned previously from a Google Play Store. Just scan the, your network and check what IP address, what new IP address your Raspberry Pi received. So in my case, I need to wait for about a minute or so for all this to finish. So once that's done, I'll come back. So my Raspberry Pi has got rebooted. New IP address is assigned. Well, in my case, it's the same IP address because I'm forcing the home router to assign the same IP address to my Raspberry Pi. So it's still ending with 86. So if I go to the Samsung Internet Browser and type 192, 168, 178, 86, I should be presented with Open Media Vault login screen. So we have Open Media Vault set up. Next, we need to get Plex Media Server installed. To get the commands, what you need to enter in terminal to get the Plex Media Server installed, you will find the link in the description below, which will take you to a Pi My Life app. Pi My Life app website and one of the articles explain to you how to get uh, the Plex server running on the Raspberry Pi. So already we've done upget and upgrade before doing the Open Media Vault. So next we need to copy this command and enter into the, our terminal. So I'm going to run SSH again. We will connect to Pi server. I'm going to click and hold, press paste. And now it's just going to add the apt transport HTTPS uh, files. That's going to be done in a matter of seconds. Once that's done, we need to go back to our uh, Pima Life Web website and copy this command. So we're just copying this, going back in terminal, click and hold, left click and hold, press paste. That will take seconds as well. All the installation process of Plex Media Server is takes in a less than five minutes. We're copying the next command line and we're gonna paste that in. We have all the repositories in, so we right now need to update the repositories list. This command probably the, the longest one that will take to, to get it done. So here we go, is doing all the bits that needs to get the repositories updated with including the Plex Media Server files. And then we're just gonna run this command, which is gonna install Plex Media Server on our Raspberry Pi. So let's wait for packages to get updated. And we're just gonna, here we go, it's all done. We're gonna clear the terminal, left click and hold, press paste. And now Plex Media Server is getting installed on our Raspberry Pi. This will take, I would say about two minutes, not even that. So I'll come back when it's all done. Actually, while it's installing, we can go and start setting up our Open Media Vault. So if we're gonna go to a browser, go to Open Media Vault link, uh, enter IP address and press enter. The default username is admin, the default, default password, default password is Open Media Vault, Open Media Vault. So once connected, I'm always like to change one thing. So let's wait for this to do. Go into general settings and change from five minutes to disabled. I don't want automatic get locked out. So I'm gonna click apply and click yes. So that's doing. So while that's happening, I'm gonna connect my SSD, 240 gigabytes SSD to Raspberry Pi. And we're gonna start 
creating partition on this drive for photos and videos and I'll show you how to set up the rest of the things with the Plex Media Server. I do have my SD, SSD connected so if I go to the disks on the left hand side I should see that in the list so that's that it is. I will select that and by the way if it's not showing up in the list you just press scan and it's going to scan again. So I'm just going to click wipe and I want to delete everything what's inside that SSD. Yes I want to do a quick wipe. So let's wait for you. that's done. We're going to click close. We're going to go next option down or a couple options down to a file system. And now we need to create a partition on that disk. So we're going to select the SanDisk, um, uh, sorry, uh, SanDisk or SSD. We're going to write SSD to 40 GB. We're not creating partition, but sorry, we're just formatting the hard drive to be detected by Open Media Vault and our file system to be detected by Open Media Vault. I'm going to leave EXT4 as default. We'll click OK and click Yes. And this process will take between two minutes to about 15, 20 minutes, depending how big hard drive you are formatting and creating this. As you can see, this is SSD 240 gigabytes and it needs to go up to 1789. When I was doing the same process with my one terabyte hard drive, it was going up to 7000 or so. And when I was doing the same with my two terabytes hard drive, that was going up to 14,000 or so number value. So it's all depending how big your external hard drive is and how like how fast and etc. So like I said, this should take about between two minutes to about 15 or so minutes. Just leave it running. If you by mistake will close this, let's say I close this by accident. If you go into the list of uh, file systems, you will see your hard drive showing up and it's saying initializing. So as soon as initializing will change into online, that means the formatting and everything is done and then you can start or continue in um, setting a process. So we're just going to go back to disks and we're going to go back to um, file system just to refresh this page. As you can see right now it's online, it's showing online instead of initializing. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to say mount, wait for confirmation message to show up at the top right hand corner. So let's wait for this to show up and uh, I'm just going to click apply. Here we go and click yes. They apply and yes a confirmation message almost everything that you do in Open Media Vault will you will have to double approve if that makes sense. So that's what's happening now. So all, all ticking well. Let's wait for this to, to get it done. And as you can see in there saying SDA1 SSD to 40 GB EXT4 file system and it says mounted and it says status online. Great. Now we need to go into a shared folder. So we have hard drive with no folders inside. So we need to create a shared folder. We're going to click add. We're going to name this saying photos. We're going to select the hard drive that we just mounted. Automatically inside that hard drive will be created a folder called Photos. And I'm just going to select Read and Write because I just I'm going to use this internally in, inside my home network. So I don't really need any usernames to be created. But you need, if you're planning to use this outside, uh, without, not just for Plex, but something else, just use a VPN connection or something. Or obviously create the usernames and passwords just to protect your data. I'm just going to save Yes, click Yes. Wait for confirmation message to show up again. We're going to say apply. We're going to say yes and wait for this to finish. And once that is done, we're going to go and start creating a Samba server, which will then be used by Samsung Text to upload photos and videos. Inside the Samba, I'm just going to click turn on, click save. Wait for this to happen. Nothing else has changed, by the way. I'm leaving everything by default. I'm just turning the Samba server on. So again, I need to apply and confirm. So double confirm, um, like I said, on almost anything that you do inside Open Media Vault, just as a protection, just in case if you're messing something up. So it's basically asking you twice, are you sure what you're doing? So this need gonna take about, again, a couple of seconds or so to complete. Samba is running, so we're gonna click on shares. We're gonna create, click, select the folder that we created. So we create a folder photo, photos, uh, and inside public, we're gonna say guest allowed. Like I said, I'm going to use this internally, so it doesn't matter if it's basically allowing everyone to connect without a password. So here we go. We are getting the Samba set up, and this is the last thing what we need to do inside Open Media Vault. I'm going to go open My Files app, scroll down to Network Storage, wait for this to... Oh, great. There is an uh, upgrade. Uh, I didn't expect that to happen. So uh, that's what happens when you're recording videos on the fly. So I'm just going to delete this. This is something that I've done previously. I'm going to click on the, actually let's check. Yeah, so the Samba share is already working. So it says read only no and a browsable yes and a guest allowed. So I'm going to go to back my files, click on network storage, click on a plus sign, click on a SMB network storages, wait for my files to finish scanning and it will detect every SMB folder inside your network. As you can see, I have a bunch of them. 
I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna say guest allowed because like I said, is everyone can access and here we go. This is a folder we created. So inside the downloads, I should have this wallpaper. So I'm gonna say copy. We'll go to my network, Raspberry Pi, photos and copy here. So that's in here. Now go back to a browser and type the same IP address as your uh, open media vault, but finish with three two four hundred uh, semicolon three two four hundred as a port number, then slash web slash and press enter. And yeah, it then did, did correctly three two four hundred web. Oh, doing installation process. I need to press enter because it's asking things to do. Oh, well, let's wait. I totally forgot about this. Even I've done five or six times. I completely forgot about this. Here we go. That's done. So if I go back to this and press enter and here we go, we now in a Plex. So right now Plex will ask me to log in. Uh, it should detect my previous account. Yes, it did. It's just as a precaution asking me, are you sure? Um, this is a bug right now. Um, it's going to spin load forever. So to bypass, we just refresh the page and it's going to sign you in. Uh, then I'm select my account, punch my pin number in and I'm carrying on setting a Plex server on my Raspberry Pi, which is there in the corner running and doing its bits. So I'm going to call this Pi underscore Plex. Okay, let press next. I'm leaving allow me to access from outside. That means that with my username, I will be able to access the media inside media like videos, photos, etc. of this Raspberry Pi from outside the, the uh, my home network. I'm not going to create any libraries yet. I'm going to say yes, next and done. So here we go. This is what you see now is just the default. Uh, the movies and TV shows that Plex Life, Plex Pro version gives you. So if you have a pro version, you will get all these features. So if I'm going to go under Pi Plex, here we go. It's detected. I'm going to go back to uh, home and click more. And this is that this couple of other Plex servers running in my house. So I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to say I want to add the photos. I'm going to say add the folder, click browse, and here we go. This dev dash dash this dash whatever blah 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 unique ID number. That's the folder, share folder we created. So when we were doing uh, creating the hard drive, then creating uh, the file system, then we're creating a shared folder. That's the folder was happened. So inside here, as you can see, there's the photos. I'm going to say add. I'm going to say add to my library. And here we go. This is the photo that I copied using my files, small memory by Michael. So I'm going to close that. I'm going to open this. And this is the my folder that I uploaded to Raspberry Pi using Samsung Dex via my files, network, uh, network storages and um, feature. And this is right now on my, on my Plex server. So now I can dump all my photos and everything what I want on this Raspberry Pi and I will be able to access that from anywhere in the world. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below if you're enjoying this kind of content because I have a lot of things in the near future that I want to show you how you can set up using Samsung Dex. I just want to show you that you don't really need a PC or Mac to set up these kind of things. That's all you need is just your phone and a portable monitor. By the way, I was using my Galaxy Tab S6 and you perfect x lab doc thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe and please join samsung dex subway group with the over nearly thirteen thousand members so i will see you there and i'll see you in the next one take care goodbye